All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast. We're talking about your worst eating habit. This is my suggestion to start changing your weight, is to focus in on your worst eating habit, whatever that may be, whatever you consider it to be, um, the habit that shows up daily or weekly, the one that shows up the most. And what you do is you start focusing on that one habit, putting all of your energy into coming up with strategies and solutions to fix that habit. And the big three things you want to focus on once you start fixating on it is reducing, replacing, and removing. You don't have to just remove it. Right? So a lot of people, <clears throat> first of all, they're trying to change all their habits at once. Um, but even if they identify their worst habit and go to work on that, they want to do it and then just stop it. Um, what we want to do is we want to seek to understand it. Okay, because the more you understand about your worst habit, um, the more strategic you can come up with a solution with. And so uh, the way you do this is to look at the habit and look at it in a bigger picture, kind of zoom out on it. Uh, so when you kind of identify the worst eating habit you may have, start to notice how it runs in a pattern. Where does it happen? When does it happen? Time of day. Um, what mood are you in when it happens? How hungry are you when it happens? Um, are you alone or with other people when it happens? Again, you want to notice all these little details that you may have ignored. Because the more you understand about this habit, the more you can come up with strategic solutions to fixing it. And the beauty of this approach is that it doesn't overwhelm you. Uh, what you've tried to do in the past most likely is you try and change everything. You try and change all of your habits all at once. And in what other area of your life would that be a good idea? Like it's, a, it's the weirdest thing on the planet. And uh, this really gets to the core of why you've struggled so much with your weight loss is because you're trying to change everything all at once. And what you're able to do is you can do that for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, and then you just go back to what you always do. So do something different. And that different thing is to strategically focus on your worst eating habit for a while. Who gives a shit? What if it takes you a couple of weeks to figure it out and to master it? Do you understand what I'm saying here? I'm not talking about just willpower to fight against it. I'm talking about finding real strategic solutions to resolve it. And once you have real strategic solutions to resolve it, it's easy to keep doing those. Then you move on to the next habit. But this, again, is a much more strategic approach to changing your weight long term, as opposed to just trying to change everything all at once for a couple days. It doesn't work, okay? So start being more strategic and be specifically strategic by focusing on your worst eating habit. And once you get a handle on that, then you can move on to the next one. And after a few months of doing this, you're gonna be shocked at the results you've gotten and how much you've set yourself up for long-term success. So I hope this helps you out. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. We'll get into it. Um, this is a... Uh, Talking about weight loss on Valentine's Day? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Why not? Who gives a shit? You don't have to eat perfectly, right? You don't need to eat perfectly to master your weight. Um, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. Kind of interesting. I'm noticing some of the streaming spots. No one's showing up here. I wonder if it's something's going on. Oh, well, that's all right. Maybe we'll do a short one today if not too many people get on here. But uh, yeah, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to ask them. We got Valentine's Day here, so let's talk about that before anyone asks any questions. And then uh, if anyone asks any questions, I'll, I'll get right to them. But um, let's just talk about Valentine's Day. Because again, we'll put it in perspective of weight mastery, right? So if you're on a weight loss plan right now, if you're doing keto, intermittent fasting, whatever else you're doing, um, Valentine's Day is probably going to be a big bump in the road, right? It's hard to eat perfectly on Valentine's Day. People getting you chocolates or candies or whatever, maybe. Um, and if they're not getting them specifically for you, maybe they're just more around. Um, and at the very least, you're being cued to eat them more, right? The chocolate is more cued in your mind now because you're constantly seeing Valentine's Day stuff, which you associate with chocolate and candies and sweets and all this stuff. So um, there's a good chance that if you're trying to diet, you may struggle today, okay? So weight loss is going to be really hard because now you're probably going to blow your week. Because if you're doing, if you're just focused on weight loss, you're doing your diet and you're trying to just have a perfect week, well, now here comes this giant speed bump in the road, which is Valentine's Day. And it might knock you off track for the rest of the week and probably for the rest of the month. Now, if it's weight mastery, you can eat some chocolate. <laughs> you can eat some chocolate today, eat some candy, do whatever. Again, don't go crazy with it ideally, okay? But, but enjoy yourself, eat some of this stuff, enjoy it, and then work to get back on track with other things. Right? That, that, that's a normal, natural way to handle things. And this is a long-term approach that I think is going to serve you a lot better uh, than the all-or-nothing mindset of, uh, of a dieter, 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind and you don't have to eat perfect. I, 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 that's my message. Right? I like to get out here every day and tell you that I give you a lot of people say, Jim, I appreciate the permission you gave me, you know, now, of course it's not me giving them permission, but it, a lot of people don't give themselves permission to enjoy themselves. And so if you don't give yourself permission to eat the chocolate, what usually happens is you're going to eat it anyways, but now you're eating it under this umbrella of guilt and shame and frustration and feeling like you're doing something wrong. And so that now you're eating the chocolate, you're putting the calories in your body anyways, but now you're not even enjoying them. And what sense does that make? So again, ironically, I think one of the big things about weight mastery is the idea that you are enjoying your food at a higher level, right? Again, I think a lot of people think that um, weight loss is all about not enjoying your food. And, And I find it to be completely the opposite. Um, H bomb says having trouble finding ways to bring myself joy on days. I'm stuck home with my kids. All I think of is food. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get that. And, and you know, so what's going on here, right? Is we can, we can refer to this under the umbrella of emotional eating. And so when you're stuck at home with the kids, um, Hey, Sanaya, how's it going? Uh, when you're stuck at home with the kids, you might be bored, right? You wish you were doing other things. Again, I, I know this is a weird thing to say, right? Again, we, we love our kids, but sometimes, um, it could just be boring or be stressful. It's a lot of work. And there's a lot of emotions that can go with it. So the first thing you want to figure out is what you're feeling. Maybe you're feeling bored. Maybe you're feeling stressed. Whatever the emotion is, we want to understand that because what's most likely going on is you're experiencing some, some negative emotion. Let's just stick with boredom or stress just to kind of give it context. And what happens is your main way to alleviate the boredom or the stress is with food. And so the food is actually serving a positive intention. It's helping you feel better when you're watching the kids. And so what, one of the reasons you're always thinking about food is that's the thing that's making you feel better. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is not to just stop eating the food, okay? Because the, eating the food is serving a positive intention. So we want to understand what that intention is. And what it is, it's helping you either not feel, it's distracting you from an unpleasant emotion, and or it's making you feel some blip of pleasure for a little while. And so looking forward to the food is a way to give your brain and your body some excitement and something to look forward to during a time when you feel bored or stressed. So I hope that makes sense. And so once you realize the next question becomes, what are some other things I can do that, that well, again, we, we take the bored and stress, we say, how do I want to feel? And so with bored, I want to feel entertained. Stressed, I want to feel calm, okay? And now we ask the magic question of how can I feel entertained how can i feel calm without food when i'm watching the kids and that's the magic question because the more you fixate on that question what happens is you start coming up with solutions and strategies of ways to entertain yourself to calm down while you're watching the kids and now the focus becomes on make i want to make sure i i don't know i'll draw with the kids i like drawing i get to practice that with them or again it, i don't know the specifics of your situation so i'm kind of talking in generalities vague ones um but the more you get obsessed with the solutions uh, that would make you happy, then you start revealing strategies and solutions. Hey, what's up, Mandy? Um, that would that would help you and for the long term. So I hope that helps you out. Um, H bomb says, "What do adults do to entertain themselves?" Hello, TV color scroll. That's a great question, but that I like that question. See, now you're on a whole different plane. Do you understand that, H bomb? Like again, if we're always like, "Oh my God, why do I keep all I do is think about food?" I, oh, I, I got to stop thinking about food all day, right? You got, knock yourself out with that question. All you're gonna do is think about food. So you see, I mean, we're going to the deeper level of what's going on. Yeah, I get it. You don't know how to entertain yourself as an adult. I get that, and I know it sounds weird to say it out loud. Okay, but that's the truth. You don't have good entertainment strategies. I didn't have good entertainment strategies. I had to create them. Now it's like if I have free time, there's a bunch of things I can do. And there's things I want to do. Okay? I can play guitar. I'll mess around with the piano. I want to draw. All right? I, I like reading. I like going for walks. I like taking my dog for a walk. I like playing with my dog. I, I you know, play with my kids. There's a lot of things I want to do. And so that's the question you need to ask, H-Bomb. What, what do adults do? What do I, What can I do? To entertain myself and again i know you may not have the answer now but if you stick with that question you're going to come up with answers and once you have those answers everything changes because again you're not eating because you're just obsessed with food you're obsessed with food because you don't know how to entertain yourself without food and you're not alone we've been conditioned in the society to use food as our main emotional management strategy understand that there's a lot of money being made off of you thinking about food and eating food all day long 
And so we live in this culture where we don't learn how to genuinely deal with our emotions. We don't learn how to genuinely entertain ourselves. And so you got to figure it out for yourself. Okay. But once you got that answer, everything changes. All right. So I hope that helps you out. Um, Erica says, where do you start your lives? I came into TikTok live. I am you, but you're already done with opening talk. Yeah, Erica. Okay. I, that was you. Um, yeah, I was late today. Sorry about that. Uh, I like to start around noon. Uh, I was talking to a, an old friend of mine, so I got, kind of got caught up. But I'm usually here noonish. Uh, yeah. And remember, you can always, you can watch the, I, I do this, I guess I'm primarily kind of in TikTok live, I would say is the, the main thing, because that's where the most people are kind of asking questions and things. Um, I'm simultaneously, I stream to YouTube, my YouTube account, Instagram and Facebook. And so you can watch me on any of those three either uh, and ask questions there. The YouTube actually has a recording of this as well. So if you like watching the video, you can go to my YouTube channel and watch the, the replays there. TikTok doesn't put the replays up. Um, and what was I going to say? Oh, and then the, and then the audio is, is, in the, is the podcast. And you can listen to the podcast on any of the podcast platforms. It's Program Yourself then. Uh, so... Yep, he says, hope you're well. I'm doing pretty well. I got like a little sniffly cold. I think it's a sugar cold. I, I ate a bunch of donuts the other day. Uh, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome, H-Bomb. Mind over matter, people. Yeah, Mandy knows too. Mandy was just, uh, I've been working with Mandy for a little bit. She's been on the program and uh, she's killing it. She's uh, down three stone. For those people that don't understand English slang, it is, uh, it's almost 42 pounds, I think we figured out. So yeah, Mandy her goal and i think she's she's well on her way to it is that she uh will be my one of my number one success stories of all time and i think she's well on her way uh eric says not the time but tiktok said you came on i went in and you were done with the talk already oh yeah well sometimes the the timing and the the notifications all that stuff's a little bit delayed so and it was kind of a quick talk today i kind of went through it pretty quick uh silver silver seps Oh my God, it's my first TikTok experience, Jim. I've been listening to your podcast, but I need more PYT. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Everyone needs more program yourself then. I mean, I'm telling you, like, again, I, I don't know. It's not, not appealing when people are tooting their own horn, but it's it's just been a funny time. Uh, and I, I actually, and I think I've, I've mentioned this before, but program yourself then now is available as a standalone program. So last year I was real, I was only selling it as part of a coaching program. And that was a thousand dollars. I know that's outside of some people's, um, you know, budgets. So now I'm, I'm excited to offer the, the program's been updated even more. It's, it's even, it's, it's a fine tuned machine at this point. Uh, the program itself is available and, um, you can get that right now. And that's $300. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you're really, if you're really serious, I mean, if you like the podcast, I, I can't urge you enough to get the program yourself thin course. If you don't do the coaching again, I always say, good Lord, you know, if you can, if you can swing the thousand dollars to work with me in the group, I keep the group small. I, I tell you, it's one of the most valuable things that there's not too many of me. So when, when I get to work with you directly is, is the most value I can offer you. Uh, and I can tell you that that would be the biggest and best investment you've ever made in your way. I, I guarantee that I guarantee it because I can see what you're doing very quickly. Um, but if that's outside your budget, the program yourself thin course is incredible. I mean, it's an eight week immersion program. Uh, and, and it's just so awesome. And, and, uh, what I've added to that as well is we're going to start up live classes on Tuesdays. So you'll get live classes. Again, that's not coaching. Okay. But I will be doing live classes each week and you'll have the opportunity to ask any questions you may have. So I'm really excited about that because now I'll, I feel better because I can kind of, if you're getting stuck in any of the, on any of the techniques or any of the, the pieces of the program, I can guide you through that. And so I'm really excited about that. So again, that's just another option that's available to you. And it's, uh, Wow. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite a program. You know, I'm not going to go through it all right now, but it's really great. Um, yeah, Mandy says, I'm smashing it. Guys, get joining. Yeah, Mandy really is smashing it. And I'm just going to use this. I know Mandy wouldn't mind. Mandy has not only lost 42 pounds, which is awesome, but more importantly, she's sleeping better than she's been sleeping in a long time. She's handled her anxiety, you know, so it's almost, I don't know, she's completely off the meds. Uh, she drinking more water. She just started her own business, you know, so I say this to you because it's really never about just the weight loss. What program yourself then really is a personal development program. And as I always say, you should take your weight loss and wrap it in personal development. If you're going to lose weight, you might as well use it as an opportunity to improve everything in your life. <laughs> you can do that because when you start living healthier, eating healthier, feeling better, everything in your life improves. 
So, you know, she, she's just a, a superstar, and I'm glad she's killing it. Uh, yeah, PYT is life-changing. Yep. I feel the calls are so valuable. The, the calls are valuable. I mean, the, the group coaching calls are just, it, they're just crazy. I, I, they really are. I've known that, I mean, I've, I've been coaching. I, I've done over almost 6,000 private weight loss sessions, and so I know the coaching sessions are valuable. Uh, but last year is when I started doing the group ones, and that was exciting because, again, it's $25,000 to work with me privately. And so I know a lot of people can't do that. And so doing the group coaching was exciting to be able to bring more people into it that, that may not have been able to do the 25K. Uh, and so that's been a, a smashing success. And it's been so much fun having a group program because, you know, not only do you get to work with me, but you get to listen to other people work with me. And listen, you know, a lot of the stuff you're, you're dealing with, all, it's all the same stuff other people are dealing with. You know, sometimes the specifics are a little different, but ultimately, you know, if you want to lose weight, you're all dealing with the same stuff. Okay, we all get the same things we got to get work through. So it's very helpful to hear me working with other people as well. And, and I find a lot of people find that very, very valuable. Um, so yeah, the, the calls are great. Uh, yep, Manny says, yes, I found myself the other factors I didn't even want to work on. I have, yeah, of course, right? Because we make it, yeah, it's all about personal development. And, and you, I always say that, you know, like, like the weight loss alone isn't enough motivation. And I know you think it should be. I know you thinking you want to look better and you want to lose weight. You think it should be motivating enough but you got to look at the facts on the ground. Are you losing weight? And if you're not losing weight, I can almost guarantee you it's because you're not really motivated to lose it. You, you wish you'd lose it, but you don't really want to lose it. So we really reframe this whole process from just being out weight loss, which really is not that motivating to your mind, to making it about being the best version of you possible. And one aspect of that is you weighing what you want to weigh, but then there's all these other benefits you get too. Now that's a lot more motivating to your mind. So yeah, I, I, that's, again, Mandy's a great example of that, that, it's not just the weight. I'm getting she's down 42 pounds, which is considerable. Uh, but it's all the other benefits that, that I think are even more important and uh, are going to make the whole thing last a lot longer. You know? uh, Sarah Sunshine, if we already are part of the program without coaching, we'll be invited to the live sessions. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give anyone who... I've been selling the, the program on its own for kind of low-key. You know, So if you found it, that, that good job. Uh, but it's been kind of low-key. But anyone who got that version of it, um, in the past without the coaching, yeah, you'll get, I'm going to give you eight weeks access to the live calls. Okay. So you can go through it. And if you have any questions, you can get on them and ask them, uh, replays will be available for it. So yeah, you'll get emails for that. They're going to start next Tuesday. And so you'll, you'll get an email for that. Uh, silver steps started the writing hypnosis through spark. Yep. After losing and gaining a hundred pounds twice. Now I get it. That's awesome. Now to you, I say this, that losing a hundred pounds twice is it's tough. It's very discouraging and frustrating. But what I want to remind you, we were just talking about this in the group call last night, that, listen, I know if you're watching this right now, you have probably been trying to lose weight for, for a long time, probably decades. You've probably lost weight, put it back on, lost it at least a couple times. One thing I want to remind you is that you're, it's not even just if you start my program, but if you start any program, I want you to recognize you're not starting from scratch. You know, a lot of time dieters always think like every time they start something, okay, I'm going to start from scratch. I'm starting again. Because you're just thinking as this streak from day one to wherever you're going to get to. But what I think is really valuable and, and program yourself, then we absolutely use this, is I want you to reflect on all the experiences you've had. You've got a lot of wisdom. You've got a lot of answers, a lot of solutions, a lot of strategies that you've worked on and figured out over the years. The problem is that as a, in a dieter mindset, it's all or nothing. And so you never look at the past experiences, good or bad, and learn from them and use them to kind of tweak and inform your new start, okay? So I, I, again, I'm telling you, I know you've got more wisdom in, in, in solutions and strategies in you than you realize. And so a program yourself, then we, we look to utilize those. You know, we really want to make use of all the experience you have. Even if you haven't gotten the full results you want, you still have a lot of wisdom that you're not using, and so, especially you, if you, you've lost a hundred, gained and lost a hundred pounds twice, I know it's frustrating that you may have put, you may be up to hundred pounds right now, but yeah, you've got so much wisdom in you that you can tap into right away. And so it's about activating that. And again, program yourself in like that. I mean, if you don't get program yourself in, it's about the core program yourself in is really two things. It is the weight mastery blueprints, which is really about going through your mindset, lifestyle, and eating blueprints and really customizing them to yourself. And again, you've got all this wisdom. So you know, like, like again, mindset, for example, we start with motivation. When it comes to motivation, in life, when you do things, you either learn what to do or what not to do. 
So when you, you lose and gain 100 pounds twice, you've got a rich history of knowing what to do, what works for you, and what not to do, what doesn't work for you. And if you start to really honor that and build around that, it's going to be very different because I can guess what you've done before is you're like, you're saying, okay, now I just got to do this. But you're never looking back at the past and learning from your mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes dieters make. And so program yourself then, we really honor your history and your wisdom and we use it to put into these weight mastery blueprints that are really your roadmap back to your goal weight so that you can live there. And again, so, so it almost is it's very, it feels good because we start the process off not beating yourself up, not feeling bad about yourself, but honoring yourself, you know, really appreciating and honoring your wisdom and your experience and everything you've gone through, good and bad, and utilizing all that to move you in the direction you want to go in. Okay. And then the other part of program yourself then is the program yourself then technique, which is really how to program your mind, you know, how to run your mind. Uh, yeah, man, he says, if I didn't work on my sleep, water and anxiety, I wouldn't have been losing weight. Yeah, exactly. That's another point I want to make out because I would say there's always a percentage of people in program yourself thin that the weight loss is really not the first order of business. <laughs> okay. The first order of business uh, for a lot of times for people is something emotional. It's something lifestyle behavior, sleep, for example. Uh, so if you're sleeping like shit, weight loss is going to be really difficult. If you're dealing with anxiety, you have no idea how to manage it. It's going to make everything else really difficult. So a lot of times we want to deal with these fundamental issues first. And once we do that, the weight loss, you know, kind of takes off on its own. So yeah, I'm glad you said that, Mandy. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Erica says, you said down 42 pounds. My brain immediately said, how long did it take? <laughs> That's okay, Erica. That's normal. And by the way, I want to make something, I want to make a point of that, Erica, is that with this process, I want to make this crystal clear because a lot of what we're doing, when I talk about running your own mind, one big part of that is that you have an internal dialogue, right? You're always talking to yourself. And that internal dialogue is probably really negative. Um, or you have a diet or mindset. And so how long did it take? And so... You, that, that's never going to go away. Your, your diet or mindset's never going to go away. It, 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 neural, n neuroscience says that neural connections, neural wiring, you can't get rid of. You can wire over it, but the neural wiring is always going to be there. This is why you can not ride a bike for 40 years, get on a bike and know how to ride it. Okay? So that diet or mindset's there. And that's not a problem as long as you become aware of it. And so once you realize you're having a diet or mindset thought and you're aware of it, that, that's all you need. You were developing another voice to counteract, to balance out the dieter voice. But I don't want you to measure your success on whether that dieter voice there is there or not. A lot of people make this mistake. And so you're always going to have that dieter voice to some degree. Not a problem. Again, we're looking to develop a counter voice to balance it out. That, that's the important piece. And so you're, you're proving that you're doing that because you realized you had that thought. So great job. Um, six months, but I had so many downs. Thanks to Jim, I'm thriving. Yeah. And that's the key part too. Uh, uh, and, and by the way, it's like funny, like it's, it's like even, and I know I, Mandy's writing like, like six months, but right. As if six months, as if 42 pounds of six months, isn't that much, <laughs> you know, it's just a funny world we live in. And again, you've been conditioned by the diet industry to think about unrealistic, goofy expectations because every diet ad you've ever seen in your life and you've seen millions of them is the before and after picture and it's typically outliers it's people that really just were outliers with that whole process and they lost an extreme amount of weight in an extreme short period of time typically and so you're just so conditioned to think in that way so if you think 42 pounds of six months you're like nah that's that's not that good you know even you said that again the butt is almost like justifying that it took six months but to be down 42 pounds in six months is tremendous. I don't give a shit. And, and then if you understood how she did it, she didn't diet at all. You know, she did it very strategically. So she's down 42 pounds, but she's not just down 42 pounds. Again, she's sleeping better. She's hydrated. She's relaxed and calm, um, weaning herself, if not completely off of the anxiety medication. So there's it started her own business. So there's all these other things that have also gone with that. And so she's set up 42 pounds down. She's unlike a typical dieter who's freaking out. Am I going to be able to keep this up? Am I going to be able, am I going to, be able to maintain this? Am I gonna, and she's in a different, completely different headspace. So, uh, yeah, it's always so interesting with the time and the weight. The time doesn't matter, though. I'm so inspired that you're killing it. Yeah, that's the key thing is the killing it. That's the important part. Um, thank you. Thank you. Saving my pennies to join you because this is the answer. That's awesome. So I, I can't wait to work with you. So that, that'll, be, that'll be exciting. 
Um, I lost 100 pounds eight years ago and gained it all back. It has been so devastating and hard to restart. Following the program now for the past five weeks, and it has helped so much with my mindset. Yeah, that's great, Sarah. That's super. Um, yeah. And you know what, Sarah? I'm, I'm going to throw you... Did you you might have emailed me yesterday. Did you email me about the about the class? Some, someone had emailed me about the class. Um, you know, one one other thing I'll do, Sarah, maybe is I'll give you I'll give you a week access to the coaching calls, and um, maybe we could talk because you, you got such an interesting story here. Um, I would I would love to talk about the weight gain and, and, and kind of work you through that. I think that'd be helpful. So. If it wasn't you that emailed me, just email me again because I, I I never know like a, a name on here versus the name that you use in the program. So just shoot me an email. It's like, oh yeah, I was on the TikTok live. I'm the one who lost 100 pounds, or I'm Sarah Sunshine. And I'll remember, um, and I'll, I'll shoot you. I'll, I'll get you access to the coaching calls next week if you want to get on them. Uh, the sleep and the stress go hand in hand. It's a vicious cycle. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, but here's the thing: the sleep and the stress are, and, and I, I like the not, not the stress, but the relaxation, the calm. Sleep and calm are skills, okay? So you may be a person who sleeps like shit and is stressed out, uh, but you can sleep. You can get to become a better sleeper and you can get to be better at relaxing and feeling more calm. So I want you to always remember that. Where, where you're at now is not where you, is, that's not your full potential. So please remember that because I think a lot of people just assume like, oh, I'm a, I'm a bad sleeper. Oh, I'm a stressed person, you know? Maybe you are. But you can be more relaxed. You can sleep better. I guarantee it. There, there's absolutely, I, and I, I'm proof perfect. I used to be the shittiest sleeper. I was a horrible sleeper. And now I'm an amazing sleeper. And so it's a skill. You need to learn how to relax. You learn how to influence your mind, uh, kind of connect with your body. It, it's, it's pretty basic stuff, but no one ever talks about that. You know, and so it, it, there's, again, program yourself is all built around that because a core part of program yourself then is relaxing and calming down. And so, you know, again, every morning you get a five minute hypnosis session. Every night you get a 10 minute sleep hypnosis session. There's a bunch of hypnosis sessions in the library as well. But every day you're practicing, when you're listening to hypnosis, yes, you're getting all the positive stuff put into your head and that stuff's really valuable. But the other piece is that you're practicing relaxing, quieting down, bringing your attention in, breathing deeper. So every day you're practicing relaxation. So people typically report to me that even a week, two weeks into the program, they're sleeping better, they feel more relaxed and calm. And of course that leads to usually making better food choices on autopilot. So just always remember that though. It's, it is a skill set. Um, Mandy said, yeah, 100%. I had more downs than ups, not judged. Good, good. Yeah, Mandy did too. I know that's the amazing part too. She dropped 42 pounds during a very challenging period of life. So again, it went hand in hand with her though, because she learned how to deal with the stress head on. And once you learn how to deal with the stress head on, you don't have to rely on the food as much. And then when you sleep better, you just tend to make better food choices automatically. And then she had the mindset. Okay, Sarah, yeah, that was you. Then I'll, I'll know who you are. Um, I'll, I'll shoot you. I'll get you. Let's stay. Today's Wednesday. <laughs> Losing track of the days. Valentine's Day kind of threw me off a little bit, and then the whole week's been a little weird. Yeah, it's been a weird week. Yesterday was supposed to have this giant snowstorm where we are. There literally was not a flake of snow. And so Monday night, like where I was thinking like, oh, it's going to day off for the kids tomorrow. And that kind of threw a week off. And then Valentine's Day came and it's just been weird. But um, yeah, Sarah, I'll get you that access. Tomorrow's Thursday. So I'll set it up for you like tomorrow or Friday. And so you'll have access to the calls Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern and Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern. And there's Zoom calls, and you'll get the link for it that day. Hop on there, and let's um, yeah, let's talk. Yeah, Mandy says the coaching calls are unreal. They really are. I, I, again, that, that's my biggest skill, folks. I, again, I think the program's incredible, uh, but ultimately, my my number one skill is being able to work directly with you. Uh, I can again, I, I've, I've done so much of this that I would use the example. You know, your brain's always deleting things. If you close one eye, look your nose, you see it. Close the other eye, look your nose, you see it. Open both eyes, your brain deletes your nose. Your brain is constantly deleting, distorting, and generalizing things. So a lot of times there are challenges and solutions that are right in front of you that you're just not seeing. And so I've done this for so long that I can I can pinpoint them very quickly. And what you think the problem is is not the problem. And so I can really move you forward really quickly and help you reframe things. So uh, again, I'm not trying to be a blowhard here or <laughs> bragging, but it, I, I'm very good at it. You know, so I, I'm literally I'm one of the highest paid hypnotists on the planet. And so. You know, I, I don't get, I don't say that to impress you. I'm just saying that, you know, I, I really know what I'm doing. So yeah, you get on those calls. I, I think they would find them very, very valuable. Um, 
Mandy says, more calmness results in better food choice, and that's why I'm improved on my food choices. Yeah, and I'm not as sluggish and tired. Exactly. It, it's a, we want more benefits than just the weight going down, folks. Don't, don't set impoverished goals. Don't let your only goal be, I just want to lose weight. I had a client, I don't know if he's here, he's in the program, but um, he gets on the call yesterday and he goes, he goes listen, I'm, I'm doing this purely for health. I'm doing this just purely for health. And I was like, I, I couldn't wait to talk. I was like, bullshit. You're doing this purely for health and happiness. Okay. So it's like, it's like, again, I'm not saying like, like we're so used to thinking about weight loss as a visual thing and like, Oh, if, if you're overweight, you're a bad person, you're not as worthy. And if you're slim, that's the only one that makes you valuable and worthy. I'm not talking that level at all. I'm talking about you personally, when you start getting control of your lifestyle, your eating, you start to slim down. But again, the slimming is nice, but there's a cherry on top. The big part is that as you start eating better, you start living healthier, you start getting the results of having more energy, feeling better, watching yourself start slimming down, all the other benefits that go, you start to feel better about yourself. On a physical level, again, you start operating at a higher level. Uh, emotional level, you start to feel better. You start to feel more good emotions, less bad emotions. And this turns you into a better version of yourself. That, that again, it has nothing to do with how you look. That's always nice too. But it's way more about who you are as a person. You know, you start to become a better version of yourself and not because you're losing weight even, but because you're living healthier, because you're eating healthier, nourishing your body. You're giving your body what it truly wants. Good sleep, hydration, relaxation, breathing, nourishment, movement, meditation, gratitude, and all the healthy food, you know? And so it turns you into a supercharged version of yourself. So uh, again, you, you gotta, you gotta, that's part of the first part of the process is getting motivated. It's looking past, I just want to look better. It's not enough motivation. And there's so much more motivation to tap into. So, yeah. Um, so, it comes, I've been listening to the four hour sleep hypnosis on YouTube for about six weeks. I've lost nearly 20 pounds. That is awesome. I will take a screenshot of that. <laughs> I've got like hundreds of screenshots at this point of like people, you know, telling me all their wonderful results. I always think about how I'm going to put those out somewhere, you know, but, but that's so awesome. Great job. Great, great, great job. I'm proud of you. Um, good work. Uh, but sleeping and falling asleep so, so calmly. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That helps. Even my doctor loves you, Jim. <laughs> That's funny. Um, how do the coaching calls work? Uh, coaching calls, we do them on Zoom. So uh, if you ever use Zoom, it's pretty easy. It's, it's not much different than this, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we do them at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays, 3 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. And yeah, so how do they work though? Oh yeah, so usually, again, like I said, I, I keep this group intentionally small so that I can, I, I give you a lot of attention. I, I mean, this is, this really is the value of the world and it won't, I always say this, but it's not, it's not going to be this price for long. Cause it's, I just started advertising and stuff. So it's like, it's just going to be more, more and more people coming in. Um, but I'm always going to keep it at a limit because I, I love being able to work with people. So a lot of times, like when someone's new to the program, I'll spend a bit more time with them, just get to know them. And then, um, usually the calls are, are small enough that I can kind of go around and talk to everyone, you know, for a little bit. Uh, and I always want to keep it that way. You know, it, it may grow up a little bit more so I don't talk to everyone every single call. But um, right now, you know, because again, that's the other thing too, that a lot of times, probably only about 25% of the people that are in the program actually get on the calls, you know, e each call. So again, there's that too. So yeah, but, but they get on there and I get to know where you're at. But it's not even just, like I said, it's not even just me working with you, but that's that's really valuable. But also hearing other people, because I think the big thing is this, that the big thing you're getting a, a huge dose of in the coaching calls is you're really getting, it's a real paradigm shifter. Mandy mentioned this yesterday, actually, so I'm going to reference this, Mandy, that you mentioned this, is that you're so used to thinking about weight loss in one way. So I'm going to be specific. Mandy was saying, someone was talking about how a lot of times in program yourself, then we follow an eating structure of five clean days, two pleasure days. And I talk a lot of times about during the clean days, you may want to optimize to breakfast, lunch, dinner, three meals, but that's just, a, it's just an idea. It's just a best practice. And the, the ultimate goal here is that, or the ultimate kind of philosophy is that there's no right or wrong. It's only what works for you. So one of the clients got on, they go, um, they go, Jim, I don't know if you're gonna like this, but I mean, I, I, I set it up around five meals a day. That's what works for me. I said, great. And so Mandy was, was referencing that because she was referencing her experience at like Weight Watchers or Slimming World in the UK, where if you didn't follow the exact plan they put out for you, they, they, they would berate you, right? They get mad at you. And so I think that's one of the big differences is that A, whatever you want to do, I'm there to support you. And so if you want to do five meals a day, great. 
I, again, it's not up to me to tell you what to do. It's for me to help you to get you to do what you want to do. And then the second thing is that you're going to have challenges. And when the, when you bring the challenge to me, I love the challenges. I, I love them. I literally, I can tell you this, and I, and I swear this is true. Doing almost 6,000 private weight loss sessions, I have literally never had a bad weight loss session. Like, like I, we always get to a better place. Always. And so when, when you come to the challenges, that's my favorite part. I, I was joking last week. I was saying this to them. I'm like, I, I want you guys to fail <laughs> one time. And then I want to help you with it to get through it. Because that is one of the biggest barriers you have as a dieter is that as soon as you hit a problem, as soon as you make a mistake, you usually quit. You, you quit for, for weeks or months or maybe years. And so I always say that the, the number one skill of weight mastery is being able to make a mistake and get back on track quickly. And so I love when you're feeling down or you're screwed up or you're feeling like this isn't working, all the rest of it. I love that because we'll work on it and I'll help you get through it. So it's very inspiring, I think. And again, well, so you'll see a lot of that when we're working with people, although right now everyone's kind of killing it. But um, then you see someone who's struggling with something and you see like, oh, I don't have to beat you up about it. You know what I mean? I don't have to, to shame you into it. I, I work with you. I meet you where you're at. It's fine. We all make mistakes, you know, and the mistakes we make, we make mistakes because that's the best strategy we have available to us. You always make the best choice you have available to you. So you're, you're telling yourself this bullshit story that I'm a bad person. I should have done the right thing, but you're doing things because subconsciously it's serving a purpose, right? We started this call. Someone asked, they said, well, I'm watching the kids and I'm bored. How do I stop eating? Well, you're not eating because you're a bad person because you're weak-willed. You're eating because you're really bored and the eating is a way to entertain yourself. You see? So again, instead of beating ourselves up for doing that, we go deeper and we say, okay, what's, what are some other ways I can entertain myself? So again, I think you would find the, the thing about the coaching calls, in my opinion, just on, on a macro level, is it's a complete paradigm shift. It, you're stepping into a completely different world. I mean, these, these podcasts are like that to some degree, right? They're like, holy shit, I never think of things this way when it comes to weight. But the coaching calls are like that times a million because we're getting into specific people. You're, you're seeing real smart people um, that are struggling with things and then you're seeing us quickly move past them. And, and it's, I, I know because most people will stay on the calls the full time, even if I've talked to them, they'll stay on because it's just, it's thing after thing where it's like, oh, you, I, didn't, I didn't know that it could go that way. You know, and you start to really realize how you're stuck thinking like a dieter. And when you consistently see the weight mastery mindset applied, it, it's, it's very compelling. You know what I mean? It really is. Um, let's see here. Um, when is maintaining drifting to yo-yo dieting? How many pounds up and down? Um, great question, Hassan. I do, I, I always think in five pounds. So I, I always keep a five pound my, in my mind. I fluctuate two, three pounds a day. I could fluctuate. So I always look in five pounds. If I get to five pounds, that's when I kind of, you know, hit the gas or hit the brakes, however you want to describe it, start getting focused and bring that back down. So, so I think five pounds is a good number. Um, but you got to figure out the number that works for you. Some people can fluctuate more than me. And so maybe seven or eight pounds is good for you, but, but I like five pounds. And so I, I that's the first number that kind of comes up in my head. Hey, what's up, Don? Don says hundred percent agree. Helps you see what you're missing. Yeah, exactly. It's just, Again, and that's the value of working with a coach in general, okay? But certainly I'm a, you know, I'm a high level, super high level coach. There aren't too many coaches. Again, I don't, I don't always just say this to, to, I'm not bragging, but again, like money talks, bullshit walks. I mean, if you're getting paid 25 grand, you got a skill set. You know what I mean? It's high up. So it, it's, it's true. It's, it's a well-honed skill set. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been obsessed with it for 30 years. Um, you deserve all the accolades, Jim. Jim, you're president. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Jim for weight ma America's weight mastery coach. That's the new thing I'm going to start going for. I think I think it, it's a good, it, it's funny. I told you the whole story, but it's funny. But um, yeah, not, not for president, maybe president of the Weight Mastery Coaching Association. Um, and he says, Jim, I'd love to share my progress pictures. If it changes and helps one life, we've made an impact um, because I definitely got a new life. Yeah, Mandy, that'd be great, actually. I, you know what? I'm going to reach out to you. Let's do... Uh, let's do a video call and you can, you can send me the pictures. I'll put those up and I'll, and I'll interview you. Just talk about you. Cause you, you're so awesome. Anyways, you're, you're fun to, to listen to. Um, and then, yeah, people, it, it's kind of cool for people to see how, how it helped you, you know, and, and, and then we'll do it again as you, as you get close to even to your, your ultimate goal. That'd be great. Um, yeah, I love your mantras. So powerful. Yeah. The mantras are great. Again, it's what, what they're referring to is every day 
the, the five minute hypnosis is so every day. It's an eight week program. Every morning you get a five minute hypnosis session and there's always a weight loss mantra in it. So it's kind of built around one thing. I'm installing that into your mind. And at night there's a core weight loss mantra. So at the end of the program, you're getting like 65 weight loss mantras installed into your mind and I'm installing them hypnotically. And so it's, um, you, you know, like I always ask this question, you're constantly being programmed to overeat, to be overweight, to be a dieter. You're not really getting a lot of programming, mental programming to be thin and healthy and happy. And, and that's what I, that, that's that part of the program that I, I, I think is great. So I'm glad you're enjoying those. Um, John says, I really look forward to the calls twice a week. That is such a huge value. Yeah, it is. It's an enormous value. <laughs> that's what I try to say. I know, again, with the weight loss world, everything's always, well, not everything. Some things are really expensive. Um, but a lot of the weight loss stuff is, is low, low price, low value. Um, so, you know, again, money's always relative. So, you know, I, I try to make the most value appealing g- group thing and it's a thousand bucks. Um, it will be $2,000. Again, I, I'm keeping it $1,000 for now. Uh, as long as I can. Uh, and so I know some people are holy shit, $1,000. But it's, I, again, it, it, it's probably the best value you'll ever <laughs> have for your weight. Anyways, Bailey, hey, Jody, my failure after the first of the year has given me my biggest progress and aha moments. Yeah, okay, folks, Jody's in the program too. And so that's what I'm trying to say. It, I, I love that. I love that what, what you just wrote, Jody. Because that's what, again, dieters, it's like you make a mistake and you're just blown off the path. And then you start all over. You always repeat that same first part of the process over and over. And the real exciting part is when you get past the first part, when you make a mistake and you get right back on track. You know, one of the mantras we have in the program is that mistakes are your greatest teachers. They really are. And so once you start minimizing the emotional impact of mistakes, because right now you start a diet and right away subconsciously you're obsessed and and scared that you're going to make a mistake because you associate making a mistake with getting blown off the path. And so you actually, weirdly, you create this subconscious like um, obsession and fixation and stress about making a mistake. And so the program yourself then, we're always looking to just like, it doesn't matter. You're going to make mistakes. That's why the program yourself then technique, the, the hypnosis technique I teach you that you use on yourself, it's called the program yourself then technique, but it's really the redo rehearsal technique. And the redo part is literally, it's, it's a technique to get yourself back on track when you make mistakes because you're going to make mistakes. It's not a big deal as long as you learn from them. And so that's what the redo technique helps you do. It's a technique to get some wisdom, some learning out of the mistakes you make. Okay, so we don't, we're not scared of mistakes anymore. We're not trying to avoid them even. Well, we are trying to avoid them, I guess. But, but we're not, it's not a big deal if they happen because you now have a strategy to learn from them, put them in the rearview mirror and move forward. Huge, that, that's a missing piece of your puzzle, guaranteed. Um, what Niviets? Oh, what Nivy eats. <laughs> Um, I lost a lot of weight and was feeling motivated, got a bad bout of flu, and my gym strength is so low, feeling demotivated. How to get back on track after an illness or other break. Haven't gained weight, but I've certainly lost strength. Yeah, okay. This is this is so important too. Again, I, I cover this in the maintenance section because what an important question to ask. As you go through your weight loss and ultimately weight mastery path, you have to understand there's ups and downs. Right? Like I broke my foot last, last August and it's, it, it was a challenge, right? It threw me off my normal thing. You know, all of a sudden, I, I didn't take my dog for a walk in the morning. I wasn't walking as much. I wasn't stretching as much. I was losing my flexibility. It was affecting me mentally. So, yeah, there was a lot of stuff to deal with. I think what Nivy eats, I think what you want to do is you. this is why you got it. You can't be in an all or nothing mindset because let's just say you get the flu, you break a bone. All of a sudden, you can't be all anymore. You can't go to the gym and work out like you were. You can, I can't go for walks every morning. I can't be stretching like I was. So I can't be all. This is why being all or something is so important. So I broke my foot and it definitely knocked me off track, but it didn't knock me all the way off track. It, it de- like I, I was not doing as well as I typically do, but I was still doing well. So, so what I'm saying to you, what Nivy eats is that you need to look at this process with more shades of gray. You can't just look at things as black or white because this is just life, right? You're going to get the flu sometimes. Some bullshit in life's going to happen and just things are going to happen to you. They're going to cause you to not be able to be just thriving and doing everything perfect. So you need to have strategies, mental strategies and literal actual strategies to deal with these things, okay? Because they happen. So again, my suggestion to you is to start to grade yourself yeah, you're not as strong as you were when everything was great and you were feeling 100%, but see, just start going to the gym. You know, you're, you're not lifting as much weights, but you're still maintaining the habit. And then as your strength starts to come back, then you can start to increase what you were doing. But grade yourself 
in context to what the situation is. Don't grade yourself, absolutely. If you do that, if you think you're going to be as going to the gym and as strong when you're feeling 100% as opposed to when you have the flu, that doesn't make any sense, okay? So make sure that you see, you, you grade yourself within context of the situation. That would be my big suggestion to you. Um, Manny says, yeah, it's like a bad word if you don't follow them. When you were happy, I had a bad week. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? That's what's weird. I'm, I'm having a, a not great eating week right here this week, but I'm not freaking out about it because I understand. I understand what's going on. This is what I'm trying to say. I understand it. And I know I, now I've been doing this for a while, so I have a lot more confidence and certainty than someone who's starting with it. But still, it's like I understand what's going on and I've strategies to get myself back on track and I want to get back on track. So there's no fear. There's no worry. There's no you know absolute panic that I've lost my way because I've mastered my way. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Lindsay says, how can I stay positive when I'm doing everything right but seem to be gaining a little weight? Uh, yeah, okay, Lindsay, I'm glad you asked that because that's such a common thing people are walking around thinking. Um, yeah, how can you stay positive? It's hard to stay positive when all you're measuring is the weight loss because weight loss is extremely inconsistent and unpredictable in the short term. And so when I hear you saying, I seem to be doing everything right, my first question I'm thinking of is for how long? How long have you been doing everything right for? That's the first question I want to know. And I don't know what the, your answer is going to be. But a lot of times when I ask this question, it, I'm getting things like days and weeks. And so in that period of time, it's just it's, it's just inconsistent and unpredictable. <clears throat> so the secret to me is not to focus just on the weight loss, especially in the beginning phases, because it's just, we don't know where it's going to go. And I like to focus on the process. And so my, a lot of my motivation, a lot of my measurement of if I'm doing good or not, whether I should feel good about myself or not, is based on how I'm behaving. And so if I'm going to bed earlier, I'm drinking more water, I've you know stopped snacking at night or I slowed it down, um, I've eaten some healthier dinners, whatever I'm working on, if I've gotten better at it, I'm proud of myself. And I know that's going to turn into weight mastery. So again, most dieters are only looking at the scale and they're getting all their validation 100% of what the scale says. And I think that's setting you up for failure. So I, again, like to focus more on the process. What am I doing? And how am I doing it? And if I'm doing it and it's easy and it's enjoyable for me, then I'm feeling great. So that's how I go about that. Um, just found out I'll be going on a beach vacation. Need to lose weight ASAP. Is it wrong? Um, I mean, it's not wrong. Uh, you know, what's right or wrong? That's up for you to decide. Uh, need to lose weight ASAP. You know, knock yourself out. I, I mean, is there ever a time when, when fast weight loss is appropriate? Sure. You know, you get some wedding you want to lose a lot of weight for. You got pictures. You're going to a beach, you know. So I'm not sitting here. I'm not saying, like, don't lose weight fast. I'm, I'm saying if you do something to lose weight fast, it's probably just going to be for a little while. That's what I'm saying. Most, because how do you lose weight fast? You got to do something extreme. And extreme things are, let's actually look the word extreme up. I love looking words up. <clears throat> let's see what extreme actually means literally the furthest from the center or a given point outermost reaching a high or the highest degree very great <laughs> those definitions suck i don't know sometimes the definitions aren't that that great existing the high very high degree going to great or exaggerated lengths exceeding the ordinary usual or expected Okay. The idea, though, is, right, extreme things are usually considered to be temporary, right? Because extreme things, the outermost thing is the outer limit. And so usually extreme things are only going to last for a little while. So, um, again, if you just, if you really got something on you want to lose some weight for and you want to water fast to do it, I, I, I'm not saying don't do that, but that's not what I do. Do you know what I mean? So it's like I, I couldn't help you with that necessarily because I'm all about weight mastery. I'm all about getting to your weight forever, but I get that there's short-term goals people have for weight loss too. And I would suggest you look like follow um, intermittent fasters, um, water fasters, maybe keto, you know, really low calorie diets, HCG diet, if that's still a thing, you know, those are probably more the people that would be the answer for that. Um, yes, I hear you in my head all the time. Live at your goal weight on near autopilot. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. That's the big phrase I always use, folks, right? That your real goal is not to lose weight. It is to get to your goal weight and live the rest of your life at your goal weight on near autopilot. 
Every word of that sentence is very intentional and important. Um, you can never put a price on your life. I think about all the money collectively I've spent on diets. Yeah, that too, right? I know people tell me all the money they spend on diets and weight loss in some direction. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, again, this in, in that context, program yourself then is, is without question, uh, without question, the best value you can get. Because this is information you you don't get anywhere else. I don't mean to be that person. Uh, but you, it, it's, it's just a unique program because it's a unique... I I didn't learn this stuff from one person. I had to learn it from, I've been obsessed with stuff for 30 years. So there's aspects of hypnosis, neurolinguistic programming, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, personal development coaching. I'm a yoga instructor. There's meditation in there. Uh, it, there's healthy eating. You know, there's just, it goes on and on and on. So there's just so many different pieces to create this comprehensive holistic strategy to master your weight. So I think it's uh, certainly valuable. John says, I'm the same weight for a few weeks. My goals are not scale goals. I feel healthy and happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, yeah, John says, no, so true. I'll never need another program to master my weight. That, that's what I'm trying to tell you, uh, that, that once you understand these principles, once you have these tactics and strategies, you just keep working them. You know, and it's so, I know like as a dieter, you just think like, oh, just give me the plan and I'll follow it. But the big question you got to ask yourself is, you know what to do to lose weight. Like, like you have a clear idea of what you should and shouldn't eat. Your challenge is, has been and always will be, can you get yourself to do it? And this is the piece of the puzzle that you never learn. Who, where have you learned how to deal with your mindset? You, you have no strategies. You don't, you don't have any idea how to actually motivate yourself. You don't have any idea how to shift your, your self-image, your identity, to be that of a thin and healthy person. You don't know how to strategically influence your habits. You don't know how to deal with your emotions on a genuine level without food. You don't know how to think like a thin, healthy person, the nuts and bolts of it. And you don't know how to maintain, you know, on the path long term. Again, I'm not picking on you. I'm just trying to identify the real problems. The problem is not that you don't have the right diet plan, (laughs) you know? So you you got to wake up from that because if you don't, you'll just keep on waiting for the next diet or trying the same diet or, you know what I mean? You'll stay in that diet mindset and, you know, it'll be 20 years from now and you'll still be stuck. So, um, yeah. Yep. Oh, there's Kelly. Yep. In the same boat, push through it. Yeah. And again, it, it's, it is a pushing through. I get that piece of it, but it's really, it's not just a pushing through it. It's a, it's a real focus on optimizing what you're doing. Again, I always say this, this is getting into semantics, but you can't lose weight. There's no such thing as losing weight. You can't lose weight. You know, and again, short of chopping a leg off, right? You can't lose weight. What you can do is you can eat better, you can live healthier, and over time that magically turns into you being at a lower weight. So the more, to put it another way, your weight is a reflection of how you're habitually eating and living. And so as you optimize and master how you eat and live, your weight is going to reflect that. And so sometimes your weight reflects that quickly and sometimes it reflects that slowly, but it always ultimately reflects how you're eating and living. And so the more you stay obsessed and focused on getting your eating and your lifestyle where you want it to be, where you believe it needs to be to weigh what you want, that takes up your energy. And now all of a sudden the weight is really like a, again, in business we call it leading and lagging indicators. Your weight is a lagging indicator that follows the leading indicators of how you're eating and how you're living. And so as you really get obsessed and focused on really optimizing and mastering how you eat and live, you're simultaneously mastering your weight. But it's a trick of the mind. Because if you, the more you get obsessed on weight loss, the less energy you have to focus on eating and living a certain way. I, I hope that all makes sense. And so yeah, we're always gonna hit plateaus, but it's always this focus on, on what we're doing over there. Makes sense. Um, HD Dan, how's it going? I'll start the gym soon and I don't know how often I should go. Um, I mean, to me personally, if you're starting from zero, my first goal would be one or two times a week and then get that down and then add to that, okay? But make it simple. We call this the reduce to the ridiculous te- technique. Make it really easy for you to succeed and then build on that. Um, Bonnie says, you're exactly right. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Um, what do you think about Ozempic to lose weight? I'm not diabetic. Uh, well, I mean, if you've got quick weight loss you want to accomplish to go to the beach, then maybe it's a great idea. Um, Ozempic's really a Band-Aid you know, it doesn't really resolve the core problems. Uh, for some people, it does help them consume less food. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not a fan of Ozempic being, it's not really a solution. I don't think anyone says it is a solution. Um, it's a Band-Aid that potentially may help you lose weight as long as you take it. And so, again, I'm all about weight mastery. So, 
in, in that term, Ozempic's not really. I have people in the program that are, that are on Ozempic too, so uh, I'm not opposed to people using that as a, you know, as, as a supplement to help them um, while they're mastering their mindset. But at the end of the day, if you're really going to master your weight, you've got to master your mindset, and Ozempic's not going to help you do that. Um, the weight mastery mindset's the way. <laughs> That's right, John. Right, weight mastery mindset. I love that. I love that that uh, domain. By the way, great great work with that. Um, you know, Bonnie's the same here. Been yo-yo dieting for 20 years. Yeah, I get it, Bonnie. Again, the yo-yo dieting, that's that's the problem. That's why I say, like, if you've been yo-yo dieting for 20 years, it's time to wake the fuck up. <laughs> you don't want to lose weight. You lost weight before. Are you happy you lost weight those 20 years? Are you glad that you yo-yoed down? No, you're pissed that you yo back up again. Do you know what I'm saying? So it may sound semantical. It's not. Um, your goal is not to lose weight. Your goal is not to just get to the finish line and be at your goal weight. That's not the goal. Your goal is to live at your goal weight for the rest of your life and ideally on near autopilot. That's the real goal. You never articulate it that way though. And that's one of the core reasons you keep getting stuck because as soon as you think about just getting the goal weight as the finish line, that's the main goal, then you think of it as a temporary thing. And as soon as you think of it as a temporary thing, then your brain goes, well, let's just get it over. Let's do the most extreme things. I just want to lose the weight. But when you start realizing, no, my goal is to live at my goal weight, you subconsciously, you automatically start coming up with different strategies that need to be sustainable. What's the point of doing keto? Because as soon as you think keto long-term, you, you, if you're really honest, you're not going to do that long-term. No one wants to be keto for the rest of their life. And so why do keto for the, the next six months? This is how I can lose the weight, Jim. Well, what then? That's always the triggering question. I always say that, but it's the most um, triggering question to someone on a diet who's losing weight is what are you going to do when you, once you get to your goal weight? It, it, you should ask someone that if you want to piss them off. If you don't like them. <laughs> you know, like people get like, um, people get, hey, we, uh, we're we humans, right? So sometimes you got someone, you, you know, a friend and you're kind of low key competing with them about weight for years. And all of a sudden they start losing weight. You know, you can be like, what are you going to do when you get to your goal weight? You know, just you've got to just dig at them because <laughs> it's very triggering to dieters because the, the, the big, the hidden secret, the elephant in the room is what do you do? What do you do when you get to your goal weight? What do you do? Because what most dieters are doing is they're trading the pleasure of the food for the pleasure of the scale going down. And as soon as the scale stops going down and they don't have that weight loss to focus on, they don't know what to do. Again, most people are walking around. Bonnie, you'll be able to relate to this. You got two mindsets in you. You got an overweight mindset, which is your normal mindset. And then you got your dieter mindset that you tap into once in a while to lower the weight. And so you stay in this and you lower the weight, but the same problem exists. You know how to diet and you know how to be an overweight person. You have never learned how to be, how to think like a thin and healthy person. What's up, Joy? <laughs> so that's the secret. I mean, that's how you get out of the yo-yo dieting cycle. Because if you do another diet, you're probably gonna be a yo-yo dieter for the next, for 30 years. You got to do something different. You know, the dieting is not the answer. Dieting is a band-aid. It's a temporary fix. Wouldn't you like to just resolve this? You know, and so I didn't even mention this, but if you're not in my world, go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session I give you, watch the video I made, uh, and read the emails I send you. Okay, it's all all free, all free. And um, the the most important part is probably the video because I kind of go over this entire system I'm talking about in, in a structured way. Um, it's only you know 25 30 minutes, but it'll give you a complete paradigm, a complete understanding uh, of what I'm talking about here. And I think once you understand that, it's gonna be a lot harder to rely on dieting anymore because it's just a horseshit strategy um john says i eat my structured salad right yeah that's great john and i'm curious to see how you respond to that you know again listen i i, I love salads but i'm also here to say that i, I love what you're doing too because maybe yeah maybe the salads will never agree with you that's possible but i love the fact that you're going to give it some time and find out because again if i went into that when i first started eating the salads i would have thought the same thing and I didn't have any autoimmune issues or nothing like that, but I felt like shit for the first couple of weeks. I started eating a lot of salads and then I started feeling amazing. So I'm really glad that you're giving us some time. Yep. Um, yep. I used to, oh, John says I used reduced to the ridiculous on my cold calls this week. Just make the first one PYT cold calls. That's awesome. You create a new program. Oh, for sure. For sure. This stuff can apply to everything. I'm sure you know that, John. You know, I've applied it to everything. I always call, you know, the, the program is self in technique. Outside of the weight loss context, I always call it self-hypnotic programming. And I've used that for years when I was doing more general work as well. Um, but yeah, the program itself then is just taking that technique and using it, you know, for weight. But yeah, you can use that for anything. So again, good good move, John. Um, Kelly says, I got a nice treadmill for free on Nextdoor app. Nice. Can now add more movement to my everyday life. Brilliant, Kelly. That's brilliant. And I bet that'll that I bet that'll knock you out of your plateau. I would guess. 
you know that'll be interesting um you're welcome bonnie um where do i go i need to listen to you <laughs> you do you do um where can you go to listen to me uh you can again what i suggest is go to my bio right if, if you're on social media listening to this go to my bio uh, click the link, opt in, take you two seconds, I'll send you a hypnosis session. I made a video for you, three steps to master your weight. And um, I send you emails every day. And then I got some other cool stuff coming your way as well. Uh, and so, and if you're not on a social media thing, you can go to programyourselfthin.com and there's a link at somewhere at the top that says free hypnosis session. It's the same thing. Go there and just opt in and you'll start to hear more of me. Um, and or you can also listen to the podcast. I do one every weekday. It's called Program Yourself Thin. It's on all the, all the, uh, podcast platforms uh, i'm on youtube all these things and so and make sure you follow me too if you're on tiktok and you don't follow me follow me because you'll see my videos come up randomly and uh, that'll be really helpful i think for you uh yeah don says i definitely consider you my life coach not my, my weight loss coach yeah and I, I can see that i can understand that i frame everything within weight mastery because that's my real focus but in order to master your weight you got to master a lot of other things in your life so, yeah, I, I'm not surprised to hear that, right? Because, because again, to truly master your weight, you got to master your emotions. You know, all the bullshit you got to deal with. <laughs> Sometimes it's work stuff, relationship stuff. There's, there's all these things we got to get a handle on if we're ever going to really be able to master our weight. So, yeah, I, I take that. I, I, I like hearing that, and I, I think that I, I get that. Um, Mandy says, Jim, I have to listen to you each day. It's not normal if I don't. <laughs> that happens. And again, that's not, I, I'm not trying to be like some cult leader here, but it, it's helpful because I'm giving you a different paradigm. Everything's hypnosis, folks. You're constantly being hypnotized. Every commercial you see is a hypnosis session. I, I, I always wish you'd understand hypnosis because it's, uh, it, it's such a valuable and practical way to understand your mind. But uh, yeah, you live in, we all live in an environment that is hypnotizing us to overeat, overconsume, be unhappy. And so I like to be one voice out in the wilderness that's a voice that's really trying to encourage you to, to be happy, healthy, to feel good. And so, you know, listening to me every day, it's, it's just, let's be honest, it's, just, it's a unique voice. And I'm, I'm not just saying things, I'm using, I'm using hypnotic techniques and I'm speaking to your subconscious mind is my goal. So, you know, my goal is that I'm not just giving you information, I, I wanna impact you on a deeper level. And I, and I want you to impact you so you're happy, healthier, feeling the best version you can, of yourself you can be. So yeah, not that's the worst thing to listen to me because I'm, Pure intention. Kelly says, yes, thank you. Since my plateau, I've been looking at what adjustments I need to make to help. Yeah, great job. A <laughs> life guy guru. Yeah. I mean, it becomes a life guru because I think of weight is, you know, it's, it's funny. Like they asked um, Gandhi, I remember they asked him, they said, what's your, what's your religion? And he goes, my religion is like how I live. You know, you'd have to walk around and, and look at me day in and day out how I'm living. And I think a weight mastery like that, like it's this comprehensive holistic approach. And so those of you in the program know, I mean, it, it's, it's not just how I eat. That, that, that's a part of it for sure, my eating strategies and what I eat. But it's, it's more, it's, it's the lifestyle habits, to be honest. It's the way that I'm sleeping and how I've optimized that. It's the hydration I get every day. It's the relaxation I do. It's the breathing exercises. It's the nourishing my body. It's the moving my body. It's the meditation. It's the um, gratitude that I practice. So it's these things here that are, you know, 24 hours a day, 365 days a, a year that I'm working on that, 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 are the foundational pieces of the weight mastery of the eating piece of it. You know, again, a lot of dieters are just trying to change their eating. They don't change any of their mindset. They don't change any of their lifestyle. And they just expect somehow magically they're just going to totally change their eating. And I don't understand that. Um, Joy says, what about exercise? Um, yeah, exercise is fine. I mean, as far as exercise for weight loss, I don't usually recommend that right off the bat for most people because usually people that are struggling with weight, they haven't been exercising much. Right. If you're an outlier, great. Keep exercising. Okay. But if you have not exercised for a while and you want to lose weight, I would suggest that you're going to get a lot more value out of really focusing all of your energy on your eating and on the lifestyle pieces. Um, again, I'm not saying don't exercise, but I'm saying if you're trying to exercise the weight off, you're probably going to screw yourself up because there's a, there's a flip side to exercising of the burning the calories. And that is that you're probably going to be hungrier. You're probably going to be more tired and you're probably going to be sore. And those are three things that lead to more eating. So a lot of times people are exercising and then they, you know, while they burn some calories, they end up ultimately eating more. So again, initially, I find for a lot of people, the best strategy is to let, let, let the exercising go for a little bit. Now we talk about movement. So, so I'm a big fan of moving right away, going for some walks, um, doing things like that. But the idea of like thinking you're going to lose the weight by burning calories off, I think is, is 
um, wrong sighted. I think that mathematically, the best bang for your buck is not putting the calories into your mouth. That that's the most efficient way to to master your weight and um, influence that. That's my opinion. Um, yeah. Um, man, he says the weather is so bad in the UK right now, but I'm still on my hour walk because I love the feeling at the end of my in my sleep. Yeah, that's Mandy. You're wonderful. Um, I know I work with another person in the UK, and I think you know, folks. We hear about the UK weather, but I'm telling you, I think it's worse than we think it is. <laughs> it sounds it sounds awful. It sounds awful. Um, it's just like man, I hear about it, and I live in New England, you know. But it's like, and and we had some bad weather for I'd say the month of January. Good lord, I think it was like one day the sun came out. But when I was hearing about the in, in England, it's like that all the time. <laughs> um, Kular Jack says, uh, hard not to put in my mouth. Yeah, no, I get that. I mean, you got to work at it. Everything's hard when you're not good at it, you know? My kid will do something new, right? It's like, what do you say? We're playing basketball and we're working on a new thing. He's I'm not good with, I'm not good at my left hand. Well, no shit. We're not good at lots of things until we practice them and get good at them, you know? So just because something's hard, don't give up on it. Just break it down into pieces and start working on it. You know, again, that, that's what Program Yourself Thin is all about. Again, having some strategies of how to eat better, you know, it, and again, in a comfortable way. The dieter is not trying to make it comfortable. The dieter is always trying to make it extreme and, and fast. But, you know, yeah, putting things in your mouth and getting control of your eating is, is a challenge because you probably have never focused on it. You, you've dieted sometimes and try and stop everything, but you haven't come up with a real strategic solution to eat appropriately, and, you know, and I know it's hard for you, but you don't have any strategies either to deal with your mindset so you can make it easier. You have no strategies of how to eat so you can put the right foods in your mouth and avoid the other foods. Um, not that, right? <laughs> they said, you're good. Thank you. You're welcome. Again, it's always just about like a lot of times I get asked a question and you could think about this, like your, your initial thought about weight is usually wrong. <laughs> don't take that personally. But we've all been conditioned by the diet industry. And I'm glad I've mentioned this because I always like to say this once a day. The diet, the diets that you're referencing to lose weight subconsciously and consciously are all the big food, are all owned by the big food companies. Did you know that Weight Watchers was owned by Heinz? Jenny Craig was owned by Nestle. The company that owns Atkins Food Products, the same company that owns Onions, Pretzels, and Cinnabon. The company that owns Slim Fast, the same company that owns Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream. So do you really think, understanding how corporations work and understanding that the only thing that matters to them is their bottom line, do you really think that they would invest in programs that caused people to eat less of their shitty foods and would affect negatively their bottom line? I don't. <laughs> and so I think this is why you're constantly getting a stream of diets that don't work because they're all owned by the food companies and they love programming your mind with this diet bullshit and it doesn't work. So you should just assume, as a matter of fact, this is like the Costanza thing in, in Seinfeld, but every thought you have about weight loss, unless you heard it from me, <laughs> I'm joking about that, but every thought you kind of intuitively have about weight loss is probably wrong, like by 180 degrees. So what I always come at is, again, if you, you kind of go up another level, don't assume the things you believe about weight are true. Start to question them because a lot of them are bullshit. And this is a fun thing to do because most likely if you're even listening to me now, you're probably an overthinker anyways. And so get into the process of overthinking the, the, the dumb shit you think about weight loss, the dumb shit about diets that don't work that you keep doing. Start reflecting on that. And as you start to aim your energy at that, it, it's at the very least it's different. And so you're going to come up with some different ideas, you know? Um, yeah, it's become like a kick, kick in the ass if that makes sense no i get that mandy yeah when you do things even when it's shitty out it, it feels good right you, it, it feels good to be disciplined you know with, within reason um it feels good to get yourself to do things again it affects your self-image you start to think of yourself as this other person it, it all feels good i get it um are you familiar with lana mulstein and to be mindset my other mindset guru no i'm not lana mulstein nope but i will check her out lana mulstein yeah, I'm always looking to learn. You know, I'm always open to learning more from other people that are on this wavelength. Because there's not enough people talking about this level, in my opinion. And the more, the better. The more you focus on your mindset and the deeper levels of, of kind of weight mastery and, and things like that, I think the better. So this salad would take me two hours in the gym and it's healthy. Yeah, exactly, John. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> New England, New Hampshire. All right. Yep, yep. New Hampshire. I used to live in New Hampshire. Uh, I'm in Massachusetts now. What's up, Lorena? Happy Valentine's Day. That's right. Yeah, Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, every, everyone. Um, she's very mindset focused. Lots of mantras. Yeah, great. Cool. I like that. I like that. Um, 
<laughs> Thanks, Color Smile. Thank you. Appreciate hearing that. All right, everyone, I'm going to get out of here. Got to go. Got calls coming up today. Got a lot of stuff to do. Um, so, yeah, again, just one more time. If you're not in my world, go to my bio, click the link at the hypnosis session, watch the video I made for you, read the emails. It's all free. Um, it'll help you out. Listen to the podcast. It's free, right? It's on all the main platforms. Um, listen to my stuff. Get, get this ideas in your head and see if it doesn't help you out for a little while, okay? Now, if you're really serious, you know, check out the program and get on it, okay? And um, what else is there? Yeah, YouTube. I'm starting to do more YouTube stuff. All this week's kind of falling apart a little bit, but the week's not over, right? So I'll get a video up there. Uh, in the video, those are longer form videos. So check those out too. I think those will be good. If you don't follow me on TikTok, make sure you follow me so I can pop up. Um, yeah, listen to me on Spotify, Lorena. Or Lorena, you can also go to YouTube. Um, on YouTube, if you go to the live section, like it's almost like a little hard to find. It's funny like that. But if you go to the live section, it'll usually have this video that we're, we're talking about usually in better quality, do better audio, uh, and you can watch that, okay? And that, that'll probably be processed and up there, I don't know, probably five, 10 minutes from now since this is over, so. All right, everyone, have a super day, and uh, happy Valentine's Day to everyone, and uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Bye.